Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today, we're going to run our own local chat GPT style large language model, and we're going to do it on hardware ranging from literally $50 to $50,000 and experience and compare the results. Recently, I did an episode showing you how to use a local large language model to provide chat GPT like functionality on your own home machine. But I took a lot of heat in the video comments for two things. One, I demoed it on a Dell Threadripper workstation with dual NVIDIA 6000 ADA series GPUs. And two, I used Linux on top of WSL on top of Windows to do it. The major outcries were then that I should test it on more budget-friendly hardware that I should just install it on Windows. And so today, we're going to remedy that as I show you how to do it on a wide range of systems, starting with a Raspberry Pi and working our way up through a mini PC, a conventional gaming machine, an M2 Mac Pro, and then a top-end $50,000 AI workstation from Dell. And when we do it on the Windows systems, I'll show you how to install it directly on Windows without any Linux or WSL2 shenanigans. Starting at the lowest end to see if it's even possible, we'll try to install Ulama on a Raspberry Pi. And just a Pi 4, not even a Pi 5. Now it does have 8GB of RAM, which I figured would give it the best chance of actually working. You can't run Windows on a Pi, so we'll drop into Raspbian for a moment to install and run Olama itself along with the Llama 3.1 model. I'm going to start with two console windows, one where I will install using the script for Olama that I got from the Olama website, and we'll let it proceed through the download. And I'll speed up those lengthy downloads so we can get right into the install, and it will create the users and everything else that's required. Now, as you'll notice, it says it's not using the GPU because, of course, the Pi doesn't have a GPU, and so it's going to use the CPU only. You'll get that warning on any machine where you don't have a GPU, and you can also get that if you do have a GPU, but the model won't fit into memory. So let's slide on over to the other console window where we can actually download a model and then run it. First, we'll make sure there are no models installed, and I'm going to pull Llama 3.1 colon latest. Now this is going to take two or three minutes, which I will speed up because even though at about three gigabits a second, it still takes a while. So yours may take significantly longer if you're on regular internet service. Verifying the SHA digest will also take some time. I'll do a quick Olama list to confirm the model is there and then we'll run Llama 3.1 latest. I'll type in my analyze the story of Goldilocks for meeting and we'll let the timer run about 12 seconds until it's done thinking about its answer. But as you can see, once it starts generating its answer, it's very, very slow. It's about one word a second, if that, maybe one word every two seconds. Nobody wants to watch it at that speed, so let's kick it into high gear and watch the CPU graphs as we actually let it produce its answer. As you can see, all four cores are pegged to 100%. The CPU is getting up to about 84 degrees. And the most active task is, of course, Olama itself. We're using about 6 gigabytes of memory, which is not bad, but if you think about it, if you're going to run this on a 4 gigabyte Pi, it would be even worse because it's not going to fit, or it's, at best case, going to be paging hard. And after several minutes of struggling, everything has settled down again because it's finally done producing its answer. And so I think you'll agree that while the Pi can run it, you can't really use it for real-time answers. So it's possible, but not practical. Now, when a dog plays the piano, it's not about how well it does it. It's more that it does it at all. And that's kind of how I feel about large language models on the Pi. I'm impressed that it works at all. But while it's cool that it does so as a concept, no one's going to put up with that kind of performance. So let's move up to a consumer-grade mini PC, the Herc from Orion. The Herc starts at $388, and this one, specced at $676, features a Ryzen 9 7940HS chip with a 4 GHz base clock and a 5.2 GHz boost clock. The CPU has a TDP of 65 watts, and the system can drop to 90 watts out of the box. It features a 140 watt external power supply to make that happen. It uses LPDDR5 SODIMS and has a real vapor chamber cooler on the CPU. It has dual M2 SSD slots, Wi-Fi 6E, and 2.5 gigabit networking. The Herc also features a GPU, the Radeon 780M RDNA 3i GPU running at 2800 MHz, and it's marketed as an AI mini PC, so let's put it to the test and see what it can do. Along the way, I'll also show you how to install Olama directly on Windows. Okay, we'll visit olama.com, we'll click on Download for Windows, which will kick off the download. That'll proceed pretty quickly on my 5 gigabit internet that I'm fortunate to have after many years of glacial ethernet. In any event, we'll click on Open File and that will launch the installer. I'll speed the installer up here because you don't want to sit there and watch it, but uh, as soon as it's done, we are able to go into the command line and 
Olama away. I'll start with Olama list to ensure there are no models installed yet, and then we will pull Llama 3.1 colon latest. I'll speed this up because even with fast internet it takes a couple minutes, so your time and mileage may vary, but it is 5 gigabytes, so keep that in mind when downloading. Also, that manifest takes a long time to verify. With the model successfully pulled, we can now Olama run Llama 3.1 colon latest. That'll spin up Olama and we'll be able to type directly to it. Now, I'm not speeding this up, this is speed of the Herc PC. To me, this seems like it's about the same speed as ChatGPT, and so it's fully usable, and I think it's a pretty good deal for an under $400 machine. I'm speeding it up now so we can get through the whole rigmarole of its explanation of Goldilocks, but when we get to the end, we can then try something else. We'll ask it to do Little Red Riding Hood, but we'll watch the GPU meter to see how much work it's actually doing. And... It looks like it's not doing anything, but the CPU is very busy. So why is that? Well, since there's only 6 gigabytes of dedicated GPU memory, there's probably just not enough memory to load the model into the GPU, is my guess. It appears to have loaded the model into base memory and is using the CPU. Now, I also noticed that I only have 26 gigabytes of memory, and so the video memory must count against your system memory. And so the iGPU allocates a certain section of it to the GPU. Now I'd like to see if a smaller model might fit into the GPU memory and therefore run within the GPU and run even faster. Let's go see if we can install a smaller model. My next step then was to pull Olama 3.2, which is actually a smaller but more up-to-date model. And so you can see it's 2 gigabytes instead of 5 gigabytes, and as soon as it's done downloading, we'll ask it a similar question and see if it now fits into the GPU memory and therefore executes in the GPU. And despite struggling with the keyboard, I will get Llama 3.2 to run. And when it comes up, we'll type in our simple query again and we'll see what we get. And it's good news, bad news. The good news is this model, being smaller, is actually a fair bit faster and it's really snappy. Uh, the downside is it's still not using the GPU and so I'm not sure if there's anything I can do about it on the mini PC at this point. And sure enough, if I go back and check the logs of Olama serve, I can see that it says no compatible GPUs were discovered. So why is that? And it turns out it's because my car, the 780M, or my iGPU more accurately, is not listed amongst the compatible AMD products. And so it looks like at this point they're not doing the iGPU thing, they're only doing the desktop cards. Even though I'd say the performance of the Herc was admirable for its price, it was disappointing that the iGPU could not be used. We can leapfrog past that problem by moving to a modern desktop GPU like my own. This machine is a 3970X Threadripper that I purchased about four years ago now. It's rocking 32 cores and 128 gigabytes of RAM, but the single core speed is still that of a four-year-old PC. It does have one trick up its sleeve, though, in the form of an NVIDIA 4080 GPU. Nothing but the second best for Dave. Now, hopefully you'll agree that a second-tier video card married to a four-year-old CPU can serve as a reasonable facsimile for the average contemporary gaming PC. The astute observer might notice in NeoFetch that the GPU is listed as a Microsoft GPU and not an NVIDIA. That's because in this case, I'll still be doing this one under WSL2, and one of the nicest things about the current Linux subsystem on Windows is that it supports passing the GPU through to Linux. So let's see just how fast we can run local inference with a 4080. Okay, we've done Windows, we've done Linux, now let's do Linux on Windows. This is my Threadripper 3970X, which is sporting an NVIDIA 4080, not the uh, later model, the original one. Now in the left-hand window, I'm running NVTOP, which is kind of like Task Manager for NVIDIA cards and allows you to monitor the progress and the use of the video card. So I've done Olama Run 3.1 of latest, and we can now see the, some spikes on the GPU as it's loading the model. And as soon as we give it a question, we should be able to see it burn through and start using the GPU. And it looks like we're using 16 gigabytes of host memory and 100% of the GPU in brief spikes. And now with the model running, it's averaging around 75% GPU with spikes up to 100. The answer came out really quickly, even with this 5 gigabyte model. So the 4080 does an admirable job of running Olama. Now for my purposes, the 4080 is fast enough. It runs local inferences faster, faster than ChatGPT while using a reasonably competent model. And I think that's about all you can really ask for. But as I'm fond of saying, I'd trade it all for a little more, so let's up the hardware ante another notch or two and see what's possible with even higher-end hardware. I have a Mac Pro that I do all of the channel's video editing on, and it features the M2 Ultra chip. 
It's equipped with 128 gigabytes of memory. And the really nice thing about the Apple architecture is that all of that RAM is also available to be allocated as video RAM, meaning we should be able to run even large models with good performance. Here we are on my Mac Pro, which is featuring the M2 Ultra. We'll type in our query, the same one, the story of Goldilocks, and get an analysis of that. We've got Activity Monitor running up in the top there, so we'll be able to see the GPU use. It seems to spike around 50%, and it produces an answer in very rapid fashion, so this is absolutely usable and actually quite nice on a Mac Pro with the built-in internal GPU. The Mac Pro turned in an impressive performance, but we're not done there. We're next going to step up to an overclocked 96 core Threadripper with an NVIDIA 6000 ADA card installed. The CPU is set up to run at more than 800 watts of TDP, and combined with the GPU, this system pulls more than 1200 watts at the wall. Now, the model we've been running so far did well enough on the 4080 and the Mac Pro that I don't think there's much value in incremental gains alone, so let's try something new, a much larger model. The Llama 3.1 model comes in three sizes, 8 billion parameters, 70 billion parameters, and 405 billion. Up till now, we've been running the 70 billion parameter version of this model. This Threadripper is equipped with 512 gigabytes of RAM, which should be enough memory that we can load the 405 billion parameter version and see how it performs. Let's have a look at whether we can load, run, and test out this enormous local large language model. And now the first thing we have to do if we want to run the 405 billion parameter version of the model is of course to download it and it is 228 gigabytes, which means you're looking at several minutes to several hours depending on your internet speed. I don't recommend that you do this unless you actually have a need, and you'll find out why in just a moment. Once it is successfully downloaded, it will run the hash and check to make sure the digest is all correct. This can take quite a while, and as you can see, it burns through a lot of disk activity. And as the model is loaded, you can see the RAM demands go up. I think it will peak up close to 200 gigabytes of total memory. And finally, the model is now running, and we can go and ask it a question. And so we'll give it the standard Goldilocks question, and we'll see how fast it rips off an answer. Are you ready? Here it comes. Still thinking. Oh, look at all that CPU usage as it parses and gets all the model ready. And now it goes to the GPU, as we see it produce one token every several seconds. So, yeah. It's a very powerful model. It's very big, 405 billion parameters, which is uh, it's very impressive that you can run that at home. But as you can see, you can barely run that at home. This is as almost as bad as the regular model running on the Pi. It's actually pretty close to it, I would say. So, if we've learned nothing else, the size of the model and the complexity of the calculations required to operate it and do inference on it have almost as much impact as the actual machine you're running it on. So choose your model wisely. And now I will speed it up by a factor of 11,000% so that it runs about the same as the smaller model does on the equivalent hardware. And based on the clock in the tray, it looks like it took 30 minutes to finish its answer. Okay, I have to admit, that made me a little sad to see a $50,000 workstation brought to its knees like that. And by the way, the big machine is on gracious loan from Dell. I think a lot of you assumed I ponied up the money for an outrageous machine like that, but you know what they say. I didn't get rich by writing a lot of checks. Still, I feel like I have to redeem the machine somehow, as it's unfair to burden it with a load that none of the other machines could even hope to lift. So let's give it a task where it can really shine. The new leaner and more efficient Llama 3.2 model. Okay, let's see what the Threadripper and the 6008 it can do with a smaller model, the more efficient Llama 3.2. It is significantly smaller, I believe it's about 2 gigabytes, and we'll find out once it is downloading. But once we get it installed, we'll try a query against it and see how fast it runs. And to be clear, everything from here on in is real time. So let's enter our standard query. Analyze the story of Goldilocks for meaning, and we'll see how fast it can produce an answer. And as you can see, it rips off pretty quickly. It's scrolling by. Let's try another one. We'll try a Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah, it's incredibly quick. This is a very speedy model. Let's get it to think about it and compare and contrast the two stories. Equally fast. Make up a uh, new story featuring, uh, let's say, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos' Porridge Predicament. And there you have it, Olama on everything from a $50 pie to a $50,000 Dell. If you like this kind of stuff, or if you found today's episode to be any combination of informative or entertaining, remember I'm mostly in this for the subs and likes, so I'd be honored if you'd consider subscribing to my channel and leaving a like on the video. And if you're already subscribed, thanks. And do be sure to check out the second channel, Dave's Attic, which features the weekly Q&A where I try to answer all of your random questions, including about the episodes like this one. 
Thanks for joining me out here in the shop today. In the meantime and in between time, hope to see you next time, right here in Dave's Garage. Do it, Glenn! Do it, do it! Hey.